So I got uh, uh, read a thing the other day, the average seven months, and that's it. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, oh, Marvin Singler got the same thing. Yeah, 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 down in Houston. Well, how do you feel, though? Well, at times I feel, uh, right now, I feel real good. Yeah? I don't have much taste lots of times, and, uh, and see, I've got congestive heart failure, too, and I, yeah. I, I walk maybe 30 feet, and I have to rest, but I can rest in, in, in just a few seconds, then, then, and then you're ready rest. to go again. I see, I see. I used to, up until this thing hit me, I was walking two and a half miles a day now. Is that right? Uh, now I'm doing good to get two and a half miles a year. Yeah, yeah. So do you live here by yourself? My daughter lives here with me. Your daughter lives with you? I see, I see. How old are you? I'll be 80, 85 in September. 85. How long have you lived here? Since 1970, 75. 75? Well, tell me about your... Uh, where did you grow up? Sort of well, give me a little biography of yourself. And I grew up here in Bryan. I was mm -hmm. born and raised here, and I, uh, uh, I, 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 I used to know the biggest, most of the people in town. The town about six thousand dollars, six thousand people. Right. And I, uh, uh, I delivered all different kind of papers. Uh, one news agency that delivered seven. And I don't know, you may know Reuben Bond. He used to uh, have the Chronic. I delivered the Chronic. I delivered the Eagle. Yeah. And then uh, the work for the Western Union. So I knew, I knew, right. either knew or knew of mo mo most, most of the people from Bryan at that time. Did you grow up here in North Bryan or where? Uh, no, it's on, it's on, uh, uh, it's on, on Cold, Cold Street up there. Uh huh. Uh, just off Earth, Earth and Avenue. I see. I see. So where did you go to school? I went to school in Bryan. And Bryan, Stephen F. Austin? Yeah, yeah. class 65. We just had a reunion about a, about a month ago. Yeah? And what class? 42. 42? Yeah, we just lost Joby, Joby Rafina out of that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, and, uh, uh, that's right, yeah, JJ's mama, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, I read about that. Um, and then you, uh, so talk about your service. When did you uh, enlist? And well, I, uh, most of my friends went into the Navy, and they wrote me how good the Navy was and all that stuff, so, and in school I was interested in history and geography, so right. uh, I was afraid I was going to get drafted. I had a, I got a slightly deformed right hand, so. I uh, I wrote the Navy, and I ha I had a hernia too, and um, the, the the third time I wrote them, I said if I if I'll sign a piece of paper that uh, Satan and Satan fix the hernia, they'll take me. Well, they they took me. They never did fix the hernia. I got that after I got out. Right. Uh, so um, so I say I. The, the, the guys I knew, they are talking about they had a clean place to sleep every night, and it's like three meals a day, and yeah, and and you moved around. You got you didn't get stuck in in, in, in one place. And so I uh, I enlisted, and I, I tried to enlist with the you probably heard the Houston Volunteers, mm -hmm. the way where they uh, recruited about, about 14, 14 people to replace them. Right. I tried to get in on that. I, they, they wouldn't take. They wouldn't take me in on that either. Uh huh. And so I enlisted and went to went to San Diego for boot training. And from there I went to uh, 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 University of Minnesota, say uh, the St. Paul campus. And right. I, uh, trained trained to be a machinist mate and. Uh, it's odd, in, uh, in 16 weeks I became an auto mechanic, a diesel mechanic, a, 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 a lathe operator, uh -huh. an arc welder, a, a, a settling welder, <laughs> <laughs> <George laughs> an air conditioning specialist, right. a, a diesel mechanic. 
<laughs> and then from there I went to... Uh, <laughs> and you learned all that in Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, uh -huh. that was 16 weeks. Right. And then I went to uh, <laughs> uh, Virginia, uh, north of Virginia, and uh, got a, uh, had a seaplane tender, and uh, we, we, we were delivering mostly cargo from, all the way from Bermuda down to uh, Trinidad, Panama, South, uh, uh, Brazil, and uh, and uh, had to, we we had to fight those subs. Those subs were in the Amazon River. Yeah. What kind of boat were you on? Uh, this was a seaplane. Sea plane tender. Oh, they, sea plane. Okay. Okay. They used it as a uh, it was more or less a cargo. Right. And then after six months of that, I transferred went aboard the USS Wash. Mm -hmm. The aircraft carrier. Yes, sir. And uh, stayed on that thing. I well, I went on in, in November '43, and I got off of it in December '40 '45. A '45. Okay. And, so you were there for two years. And uh, mm -hmm. we went all over, all over the Pacific, from uh, in, all the way from the Australia up, up to to Japan. Where did you leave from? Were you back on the West Coast again? Where, where did you embark? We, we worked out of Hawaii most of the time. Most, okay. Most of the time we were out at sea. These, these people talk about going on cruises. In fact, some of uh, uh, the ship has a reunion every year, and these idiots have even gone on the on a cruise. I tell them I spent nine months before I got got, got ashore, and I don't care to go, <laughs> go to sea. That's right. You cruised enough. <laughs> So the USS Wasp was a carrier? Yeah, the aircraft carrier. And it worked mostly out of Hawaii? Yeah, well, yeah, Hawaii. Was, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, uh, like I say, most of the time, we, we were just uh, we were out in, the, uh, in, in these small islands taking going from one to the other and the other. And, uh, so where all did you go? Where, where, well, what, was it, what battles were you, did you? Well, I was in eight battles all together. I don't remember what they were, but it right. was in a wee talk. And, uh, 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 you left it, Palau, and uh, uh, truck, and uh, is the most of sweeping these islands. I was in on on Iwo, Iwo Jima, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, all that Okinawa. And, and in fact, uh, uh, the wife shot the last kamikaze down. That uh, you know the kamikaze, they, they, uh -huh. they were attacking the ships. And, right. Uh, and we we got the we got the last camera come call it. The last one did. But didn't uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah. oh, in 19, 19th of March, 1945, we'd uh, we'd been in a battle earlier, so we moved back, and now uh, uh, we secured from general quarters, and a Japanese. Uh, uh, planes uh, got in the landing pattern and dropped a 500, uh, 500 pound bomb. And what it was is that, uh, uh, as is pure for general quarters, the chow hounds, they run down the mess hall, mm -hmm. get in line. Well, that, that bomb went through seven decks and exploded underneath the galley or the, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Where it eating, the guy, he killed a hundred guys in that. Where were you? Pardon? Where were you? Well, I was I was at a at a fire control station. It threw me oh, it threw me about 30, 30 feet across from a wall, and and I ended up in a coma for about I don't know about four or five days. I was back in sick bed. And, and, so with with uh, head injuries or right? with head injury? Well, or, with a back injury, I had I, I got a cut and a burn on on, on, on the back. Yeah. But I had a I did have a concussion. Right. But uh, it, 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 it nothing ever never ever came of that. I mean, like I say I was I was in a coma there for about four or five days. And, right. But you stayed on the ship in the in the sick bay there. Yeah. On the on the wasp. Yeah, we stayed on the sick bay and then. Uh, and then we uh, uh, later on we come in, uh, I believe it was Brimmers, and, uh -huh. and 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 had had, had all uh, all that stuff fixed. Yeah, yeah. Now is that where you won your Purple Heart? That's from that. I, that's where I got the Purple Heart from that incident. From that incident. And what was that date again? Nineteenth of March, nineteen forty-five. That's something you'll never forget. 
And about 100 people were killed in that? Yeah, about 150 wounded. Right. Uh, but John, they say they was all going down, uh, going down the mess hall to get to get chow, and uh, yeah. and that guy just sneaked in there. They never could how he sneaked in the landing pattern. Right. And he he get dropped that thing. Right. So you spent your time though on the carrier. I mean you. Yeah, I spent the, my, most my all but six months of it. I was on the carrier. You were on the carrier, and what? Did you do a little bit of everything? What was your main job? Well, my, I mean, you, my main you, job you knew was, how to do everything, right? Well, <laughs> well I had the heating. Uh, I had a heating system of the ship. Uh huh. I had to heat, heat the ship because when, when we when we were north, it got cold. Right. And uh, and then and then I had to see that the steam got to the got to the galley for the, for, for, for 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 cooking and. Uh, and, and I, I just had to add all, all the steam and uh, right. the heat, heat to the ship and all that. I see. I see. So you were on that ship for how long on the Wasp? Well, I went on it in, uh, say, no, November of uh, 40, 43. Of 43. We went down, we went down a shakedown crew to, to uh, uh, Trinidad. And, uh, and then we went back to we went back to Boston again, and got the kinks out, and then went through the, through the canal. And, through the canal. And I, I just stayed aboard it all the time. So you were there from Boston all the way around to Hawaii, and then yeah, and then to the different islands. Yeah. So you were on that ship for over two years. Oh, almost. Almost two years. Yeah. Until you were discharged, or were you there till the end of the war? Well, no, I. Uh, the war ended. Then. We we converted uh, right uh, right after the war. Uh, we we converted to, to a troop ship, mm -hmm. and we went to Italy and picked, picked up five thousand troops over there. Oh, really? And hauled them back, and then uh, uh, on the way back, I got a word of my mother. My mother would die. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got an emergency leave, and. Uh, and then, then they sent me to Camp Wallace, which is gone. It's a part of a league city. Mm -hmm. And I was discharged there in 1946. And then... Uh, so where were you when the uh, when the bomb was dropped? Uh, I was somewhere out to sea because uh, they, 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 the ship published a bulletin every morning uh, news. And I couldn't believe, uh, I couldn't believe that one thing could be as powerful as 20,000 tons mm -hmm. of TNT. Right. And um, well, after, after I got discharged, I, oh, I worked at different uh, odd jobs. I, had, I went, to, went to McKenzie. They had a, 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 a business school here, McKenzie Baldwin Business College. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. was, sure. And, uh, so I went to there and I went down to Houston and worked for a little while and, and I come back I, uh, here, old, old man Travis Bryan got me a job with the uh, International Furniture Company. I don't know where you do, 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 do mm -hmm. the, where, where Kit Moore places that, that, that used to be a furniture company. Uh -huh. and I, was, I was the office manager of that, but uh, they had a reduction in force after about eight or nine months, maybe, maybe not nine months, and I, 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 was, I was a reductor. Right. So I pulled around and finally went to work for Marion Pugh. He had a lumber company. Marion. Okay. Yeah. You know, he was a, he was a playboy. Right. Herschel <laughs> Burgess set him up in business. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, he was paying me thirty-seven fifty a week as a bookkeeper. And... Uh, uh, he, uh, I had to wear a white shirt and a tie, and I spent 75% of my time delivering lumber with, the, with the tie. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, and to show you how it was, he had, he, 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 his foreman had ran the place for him. Right. He was the business. He was paying him 125 a week. <laughs> so that was uh -huh. Marion didn't know nothing about it. All he did. He just come grab some money in the cash register to go out and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then after I lost that job, I sat around and I just couldn't find nothing. There was nothing around here. And I hated it. I didn't want to go down to Houston again. So a guy I knew here, a recruiter, he got me a job 
the, in the Air Ambulance in Carpenter. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go in the Air Force, but I couldn't go in the Air Force because I, I had a wife and a child. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't take me on account of having two depending if I'd had one, they would have took me. So mm -hmm. uh, they said, let's go down to Houston. I went down there and then so, and I never could figure out why uh, Washington couldn't give me couldn't give me any rank, but a master sergeant down there in Houston give me corporal. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. So what uh, rank were you in the Navy when when you finished there? I was a machinist made second class. Machinist made second class. So now you're in the Army and you're a corporal. Yeah. Well, well what it is, I had to go in as a plumber. Uh huh. Because that's, they couldn't get anything to jive with me. But I finally, I ended up as a clerk, and I ended up pushing paper in. Uh, in the army, and I was, I was well, I was sitting at a school in, at, uh, at Fort, uh, Fort Lee, Virginia, and then I went to Fort Knox and Fort Sam Houston. And from uh, Fort Sam Houston, I went on recruiting duty in Albuquerque, and uh, I was drafting, I was drafting Indians. I was using using interpreters, because they'd come out of, in the paper, say, so, man, they're scratching, scratching the bottom of the barrel, they even, Getting people can't even speak English, uh -huh. and they called those names. I went and looked at my record. Those were the people that I drafted. They didn't, right. didn't speak Spanish. Right, right. And and then when I uh, so you were an army recruiter. Well, well I wasn't. I wasn't a recruiter. I I, I was. I, I was. Uh, uh, I, I, I was drafting what I'm doing. I see. I had to type you were up. Doing the paperwork. I had to do the paperwork. I had to drive the bus. I, I had to do everything. One man. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was about a three-man job, but I was working. Oh, I was working sometimes 18 hours a day, and they finally got me one idiot that was supposed to be a typist, and he didn't even know what a typewriter looked. Like. Right. <laughs> now, where where did you do this job? Where were you? This is in Albuquerque, in New Albuquerque, Mexico. New Mexico. Okay. And then when, when my time come up to reenlist. They said everybody that re-enlists re goes to Korea is a 47, 45. Mm -hmm. That's a light weapons infantry one. Mm -hmm. And I've been pushing paper for years, and I was 32 years old at the time, and I figured I'm too old to start uh, start pushing, uh, carrying a rifle. So I got out and I come up to Bryan, Bryan Air Force Base and enlisted, enlisted in the Air Force there. <laughs> so you're Navy, Army, now Air Force. Yeah. So you, okay. And uh, <laughs> this is great. Go ahead. So, what year? What year would this have been that you came back to Bryan Air Force Base? Uh, in, in 1953. 53. Okay. And uh, I stayed here. I stayed at Bryan Air Force Base for about a year and a half. And I did go to Korea, but went went as an airman, not as a rifleman. Uh huh. And. Uh, and from there, I went to Amarillo, and, uh, and uh, Amarillo, I re-enlisted re for Brian again, and then I got it. And uh, and uh, in the meantime, I put in for papers ROTC out here at A and M, because that, that, that was a good fat cat job. So I, I got I got the job. I did I did four and a half years with the ROTC. As a paper pusher at a and &M. Working over for the, the Commandant or over in the, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Office. I worked for the Commandant. I, yeah. I, I commissioned the people. I, I typed up all the, I see. all the paperwork and the commission documents. I see. Now, you yeah. say you went to Korea for a short time? I, I just spent a year there. In Korea, during yeah. the war? Well, it was over. It the was war was over. over. Okay. So I went sort there of, in 1955. This was kind of clean-up duty? Yeah, of, yeah. yeah. And, uh -huh. uh, and then from... Uh, from a and M, I I went to Elmendorf, Alaska, stayed there for four and a half years, and uh, and I was sweating getting transferred to Minot, North Dakota, because it's cold. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's cold there, but I got one just as bad or worse. It was Kinchelow, Michigan. Uh-huh. And that's right on, the, right on Lake Superior. You get that wind, it gets 45, 50 below degrees there. And then from, uh, I stayed there for four years, and from there I, I transferred, I tried to get back to Alaska again. I wanted to, I wanted to go to Alaska because I'd like to retire there. Yeah. But, uh, 
I, mean, I, had, I wanted to make some context there because when I retired, I was drawing six hundred thirty-five dollars a month, and that would just pay the rent. Right. <laughs> so uh, from from Kinsale, Michigan, I went to McCord Air Force Base in Tacoma, Washington. And that's where I got discharged. And I see. I got discharged. And How long did you spend there? I, I spent. I spent. Well, I went there. I got there in nineteen seventy. And lived there in 70, 74. 74? Yeah. Okay. And I retired the 30th of June, 1974. Okay. I beat the system because they figure a retiree, the average life of retirees is six to eight years. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm running right now at 31 years. And I, 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 my, my brother, he did 31 years in the army, and another did 22 years in in the in the uh, air force, and then my younger brother he did four four years in the army. That was be right. between the between the four we got 85 years of active duty. So you were from the time you first enlisted in the uh, navy to when you were discharged from the air force. That was about what 35 years. Yeah, I, yeah, there was. Well, uh, you, you, you enlisted 30, in 40, 30, in 42, 41. 30, 33 years. Yeah, 33 years. 33 years. Because yeah. you enlisted in 43, right? Uh, 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 pardon? You enlisted in 43? 42. In 42. 42, yeah. And then I you had were, breaks in between Yeah, there. and then you were discharged in, in 74. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, I tell people, uh, I wear my discharge button. And and they say, well, why are you wear three of them? I said, I got, I, I did service in three, so we retired from three of them. Right. My goodness gracious! Wow. And uh, and then what have you been doing since 1974? Well, I uh, I, I, I uh, in about 1970, 70, 78, I went to work for as a. As, as, on the own the Albertsons I did I did did minor maintenance mm -hmm. and uh, and that's when they used to keep the stores up if they if a tile come up that guy wanted to replace now if a tile comes up six months later somebody's going to come replace that thing the stores are nothing I got uh, I used to make as much as uh, I made as much as two thousand dollars a month there just doing doing minor stuff like fixing faucets uh, 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 laying, laying floor tile, maybe ceiling tile, or painting, or doing something like that. I do a little. I've done everything but major, major plumbing and uh, uh, major uh, uh, electricity, and I didn't fool, didn't fool with uh, with refrigeration or air conditioning whatsoever. I did. I stayed with them about 22 years until the last year. They got they they got so cheap that. Uh, I was having to get two million dollars worth of uh, 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 liability insurance, uh -huh. which cost eight hundred dollars a year. And in that year, I pulled nine hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars from. <laughs> in time, I figured, I figured my gas and everything it cost me thirty five dollars to work for a ten billion dollar corporation. So, I figured it's time to quit. Yeah. Well, I've got out uh, 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 in 1996. I had a quadruple bypass, uh -huh. and so I uh, I started slowing down, and I was getting well. I have to sit down to do all those jobs, but mm -hmm. uh, so I figured I better quit. I, I really made those people some money because I was doing a job, which I kind of felt guilty replacing the wheel of, of, of a of a pallet jack. Uh -huh. I charged them uh, uh, $145. It took me about 30 minutes to do it. Uh -huh. But then they get people out of Houston, they do the same job for $400. Right. So right. I figured, well, I, I, I'm not chipping them as bad as they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you have one daughter, is that right? Now I've got three daughters. You've got three daughters? I've got three daughters, I've got three grandsons, and one great grandson. Oh my goodness. And, and one daughter lives with you? Yeah. Where are the other two? Well, the other two, uh, uh, they, they, they're both, one lives in her. And she, uh -huh. she works for uh, this convenience bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
and then uh, and then my other daughter works for, uh, in some kind of a insurance. Uh, they, they they get the insurance companies together. She works out at uh, window building out of, out yeah. of the uh, out of, on on the bypass. Right. She lives, but she lives on the other side of Snook. I see. And your daughter that lives with you, what does she do? She she works for the, the Hamilton unit. I see. I don't know what she does, but yeah. she. Uh, and you got how many grandchildren? I've got I've got three grandchildren. One grandchild. And how many great grandchildren? And one great grandchild. Yeah. I'll be dying. Now, um, you, I, I suppose you, your your wife's no longer living. No, she died in nineteen ninety nine. In ninety nine. Yeah. What was her name? Olita. How long were y'all married? Fifty three and a half years. Fifty three and a half years. And y'all live y'all live right here. Well, well, yeah. we live from seventy. 75 till, till 99 we lived. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. The time we were we were moving from, well, I say we were there before years, we were moving from yeah. to another base. Right, right. Well, this is fascinating. I don't think I've ever interviewed anybody on my TV show that was in all three services. I've done two, but not three. I think you'll be okay, the first well, one. I'm, a, I'm running across a guy at okay. the Texas Tech Heritage Center. In the Grange, got talking to him, and he even did it in, in, in the Marines. I was said, it? He I was said, in the Marines too. <laughs> I said, "What happened?" He said, "I lost my head." But he he, he did four, four services. He did. I oh. run across one other guy that did three. He's the first one I run across and did four. Yeah, yeah. And see, these people don't realize that at that time, time counts. It. If you uh, if you in the Coast Guard or Navy, Army, it, it counts for retirement. Sure. <laughs> Right. And I, I think the best thing that ever happened to me was when Marion Pugh fired me. Uh -huh. Because if I stayed with him, I would have had no retirement whatsoever. Right. And uh, and I, I with the Air Force, I got a good retirement. I got a hundred percent disability on my heart, so uh -huh. so I'm drawing uh, uh, I'm drawing a VA a VA pay, and I'm and, and I'm drawing my retired pay. Right. Um. What you what you call a triple dipper? Because yeah. I got Social Security too. Right. A lot of people uh, don't don't realize that that uh, that uh, first of June 1957, military started paying Social Security, mm -hmm. and so so we, we it wasn't much. Right. I mean, you I say my pay wasn't much when I when I went in when I went in the army in in, in 1950. The, 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 the carpool was drawing a hundred and twenty dollars a month, uh -huh. and they, they talking about that the, now that they, that these military are underpaid. When I left the military, I, my my base pay was nine hundred fifty three dollars. Uh huh. Uh, as the E as the E seven, a master sergeant. Now a master sergeant, he's drawing something like fifty eight hundred dollars a month. Uh huh. So yeah, it's quite, quite a bit of difference. Yeah, and. And uh, that that's uh, 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 th th then he then he gets his ration and he gets his houses. So he's pulling in a, 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 a master sergeant with 20, 28 years of service, which I had. Is I'd say he's pulling in close to seven thousand dollars a month, which that ain't bad money. No sir, no sir. Well, this is a tremendous story, and I, and I, I look forward to telling it on my show. I really do. I'm honored to to, to tell it. Do you have uh, Do you have any photographs at all? Oh, uh, I have. Uh, I, I think I got an eight by ten of myself. Right. And I make. Uh, I, I've intended to go through a, a box up there that, that, that I may find find some of, of younger. You you want a young young? Yeah. 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 yeah that's what I'm looking for. But I need to. Uh, I need to scan them on my computer and send them over. Can can you maybe go through some stuff and maybe I come back tomorrow? Can you pick out some I'll, things? I'll, I'll try to see if I can find something. Will you do that? And I'll come back tomorrow and pick some stuff up and then I'll give it back to you on Thursday. Okay, Thursday is when you want to interview? Yeah, well, and I'll come and get you. Let's see, uh, I'll, uh, I think Thursday afternoon I got a chemo treatment. What time? I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to check it out. Uh, 
you know, we need to find that out because if we need to do it at another time, if we need to. I, I think it'll uh, take us somewhere around 2 o'clock. I'm not sure. It may be either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock. I'm not sure. Well, can we go in and find out or can we, because uh, I need to know that what time your chemo treatment is. Because we do this in the afternoon. If you need to change it, I kind of need to know. I don't mind coming in your house. They have uh, five or six Medal of Honor winners listed out there. Mm -hmm. There should be only one. Eli Whiteley should be the only one there. Well, he was, he was the only one from this area. The rest of them, I consider them transit to the Aggies, and that's, that is the reason that they were put there, just because, just because they're Aggies. I see. Right. And now, uh, and then, uh, Lynn Stewart died yesterday. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. They, 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 they went up there and they named the uh, walkway after him. That should have been named after Eli Whiteley, not 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 Lynn Stewart, the way I see it. All right. Okay. I, I told them that I know personally. 13 people that got killed during World War II, and I knew six that are POWs. They should have listed the people that got killed, and they should have got uh, should have listed the people that are POWs. Uh -huh. And then they come up here begging his hundred bucks to put your name on there, and they spent eighty-five dollars for a piece of tin from the from, from the World Trade Center, which to me it has nothing whatsoever to do with with with, with, with the veterans. I don't know how uh -huh. you're. What your opinion is? Well, no, I, I respect your opinion. I, I, I do, and and yeah, I, I I agree to an extent with what you're saying, but I understand why you're you're not on it, and and, and I, I respect you your know, opinion. No, no, my uh, three brothers, they they're not on it. Either. Right, right. But like I say, it, what really burned me up is when they come up and and, and they got that piece of tin from there, and they spent eighty five thousand dollars for. Thing to put to, to set it on. Yeah. When they're begging for nickel and down for people to put your names on there. Well, we won't talk about that on the show, but I respect your opinion. I really do. Well, I tell you what, if you could, though, uh, sometime tonight, uh, go through and find me. I'd like that one picture that you talked about of you when you were young, and then you said you might have some others in a box somewhere. Well, yeah, I'm all that see, see. Well, if you can, if you could find me. Ten pictures or less. I, I, I doubt if I Well, four or five then. Okay. See what it is is since I found out I had this count at my my house, I had trails in there just just getting in there. And the kids they they moved. Well, they threw lots of lot lots of it right. in the dump, and they moved stuff around. So it may be pretty hard to find some. Well, when does your daughter get home? Oh, anywhere from five thirty on. Well, if I give her a call tonight. And maybe she might help you get it down, and maybe go through some stuff. Maybe. Well, I'll I'll, I'll ask her see if she okay. See if she can find some. What's your daughter's name that lives here? Glenora. Glenora. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ask her if you know. And if we can only just get that one picture that you that you that you talked about. Now, is that one easy to come by? I, I think I've got one. I think I've got one. It, it, it's uh, eight by eight by ten. Painted, right. Painted. Good. Yeah. Will that work? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go through this afternoon and see, see what I can find. Okay, and I'll give you a call tomorrow. I'll give you a call tomorrow and see what time would be a good time for me to come by and pick those, pick that up. Okay, I got some. Oh, uh, I may come up with some some old old uh, when it would take within the last three or four or five years and. Uh, yeah. Uh, whatever you want, whatever you want to give me. I, obviously, I like the ones you know from from. Your, your service days, you know. Well, I, I, I know I've got one small one or I had it, uh -huh. but it, it would crash. I don't know. I don't know whether you. you no, that would that would be fine. It, uh, yeah, you, you probably crash. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's an individual. It was, I think it's about a three three by five. But uh, no, that would be fine. But if you come up, if that eight by ten, it's eight by ten on the wall in there. I don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. Okay. <laughs> but if you can get that one, that would be great. Or anything you can come up with. If you have a picture with you and some some buddies on the carrier or anything like that, you know, if you give me okay, whatever I've, you can come I've up with. Some, I've got a lady friend, 86-year-old lady friend. Uh -huh. I've got some pictures I've taken with her recently. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to give me. But obviously I prefer the ones from... Back in your service, if you yeah, if, yeah. if you had anything like that, 
what I'll do, I'll call you tomorrow and and if you could go through them tonight and see what you could come up with, and I'll call you tomorrow and come back out and pick those up. Well, how, how long does that thing take out there? It'll take, uh, I'll pick you up at 2. We start taping at 2.30. It's a 30-minute show. Uh, you'll be done by 3.15, and I should have you back here by uh, 3.30, quarter 4, <laughs> tomorrow afternoon. I, I, I think I could drive, but I don't want to get on the road. No, I'll pick and, you up. And, and be the, these old pokies that I get pissed off driving five <laughs> to ten miles an hour. No, I'll be glad to pick you up. I'll be honored to pick you up. That won't be a problem. And I'll deliver you right back here again. And uh, but could, could I get a could I get a, a, a tape? Or yes, sir. You'll get a tape and a DVD. Both, both tape and a DVD of it, and we're going to put it on the air pretty quick. Uh, it'll be actually on the air, I think, August the third, fourth, and fifth. When, when is John going to be blazing? Is that tomorrow night? Yeah, he'll be on this weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, he's going to be on. Yeah, yeah, he's on this weekend. He, he, it's okay, on. Now that's at so, five thirty. No, it's at eight thirty on Friday. Okay. And it's at six thirty on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, okay. On KAMU. Yeah, I knew John. Yeah. He, he class uh, 42. Right. Right. And I guess he's the one that called me about you, I guess. I guess. Uh, but I, yeah. I, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, John will be on this weekend. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he will be. Um, but that's good. So I'll call you tomorrow. If you can go through the pictures tonight, I'll call you tomorrow and come back and get those pictures. Because I, I have to scan them and send them on the computer and all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, and then I'll call you on Thursday to make sure you're feeling okay. And if you are, I'll be here Thursday at about two o'clock to take yeah, you to do the be show. Yeah, best come. Uh, see, I came over at ten thirty. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll be home by uh, I'll, I'll say about by twelve o'clock. Give you a little time to rest. So, uh, so I, I can tell. I can tell what. what, what okay. It, uh, last call. time, last time I went up first. He did, did, didn't affect me whatsoever. Well, I'll call you around 12.30, something like that, and make okay. sure that, that we're a go. All right? Very good.